Cruisers are big heavy motorcycles which are not known for their lightweight or razor sharp handling. Hey, they're for old guys who like to take their time and there's nothing wrong with that. But lately several significant new high performance mid-size models have been introduced and I'm a fan of these bikes. In fact, my Harley would be considered mid-sized. Weird to think of a 1200cc bike being called that, but remember, we're starting to approach the 2000cc range with the larger motorcycles. A bit shocking for those of us who got into motorcycling when 1340cc was considered huge. So in this video, I want to take a look at some of the cruisers from the 600 to around the 1200-ish cc range. What's out there, at what prices, and what kind of performance can you expect? Settle in and enjoy. And as always, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons to keep the YouTube algorithm happy and help the channel prosper. First, let's talk about shopping on a budget because Honda, Kawasaki and Suzuki have some ancient designs that don't require a second mortgage to get you cruising the strip in style. The Suzuki Boulevard C50 is a stylish 800cc cruiser that comes in three different trims, ranging in MSRP from $8,600 to about ten dollars for the one with the windshield bags and white walls. Kawasaki undercuts the least expensive C50 with the $8,500 Vulcan 900, and Honda beats that with two sub $8,000 Shadow 750s. To be clear, these are 20 plus year old V-twin designs that were all around in the late 90s when I started riding, so you'll find nothing revolutionary here. They're all perfectly capable, extremely reliable bikes that look good, have plenty of aftermarket support, will keep up with much bigger bikes, can do highway speeds all day long, and come with the special advantage of being easy to pay off quickly. In fact, there's a ton of these on the used market, available for so cheap that you may not have to deal with a monthly payment at all. If you're not too concerned about brands and living up to some goofy image and just want to ride, get one of these. Now, the least expensive bike I'll mention is the Kawasaki Vulcan S. This bike's MSRP falls under $7,500 US dollars and it doesn't fit in with the less expensive bikes I mentioned because it doesn't come with a V-twin. It's a newer design and despite giving up some cubes at 650cc, it revs quickly because of its ninja derived motor and handles pretty well because of its sub 500 pound wet weight. The drawback with this bike is the engine note. Its parallel twin has a 180 degree crankshaft so it doesn't sing as soulfully as a V-twin or a parallel twin with a 270 degree crank. Still, the styling is modern and different which is good or bad depending on your taste. Oh, and the ergonomics are apparently highly adjustable for many different body types. Another very modern new cruiser is the Honda Rebel 1100. Like the Vulcan S, the Rebel has a parallel twin, but unlike the Kawasaki, this Honda has a 270 degree crank, so its motor sounds like a 90 degree V-twin. It's also much bigger at 1084cc and pumps out 86 horsepower and 72 pound-feet of torque. This bike likes to rev out and lean far into turns which is very uncruiser like. It also includes all kinds of cool tech from rider modes to traction control to even offering a DCT automatic option for folks who either can't or don't want to shift. There's a wide range of accessories including touring ones and of course Honda reliability. I'm a fan of Japanese bikes because of their quality, reliability and most of all price. And the price on this one is 9400 US with the automatic costing 10 G's. No, the looks aren't traditional, but the performance is impressive and the price is awesome. This motorcycle is the best buck for the bike value middleweight cruiser. Now going from perhaps the least traditional to the most traditional bikes here. Let's look at the Harley Iron 883 and the 48. You want old school? These 883 and 1200cc EVO engines are air-cooled and sound like nothing else in this or any other category of bikes. I know because my Roadster 1200 runs the same motor. So these are your typical Harley cruisers made in the US of A out of heavy American steel and attitude. Don't expect a lot of power or fancy electronics here. The 48 will go decently with its 1200cc engine, the 883 will not, at least not in stock form. Mind you, it'll do highway speed, but don't expect much more. However, these motorcycles have the biggest aftermarket support maybe on the planet, and can literally be made into anything. That Iron 883 can run sub 11 quarters with all of the hot rod gear available for it. 
Additionally, they also have low maintenance belt drive, which you will appreciate if you've ever had to lube a chain every few hundred miles. Let's talk cost. The iron will run you 11,250 US, while the 48 will be 12,3, and good luck finding them for MSRP. Plus the accessories, which will include at least a stage one, because who rides a stock Harley off the lot? Do they handle? Yes, badly. They're heavy in the 560 pound neighborhood and to say they don't have the best suspension would be an understatement. The ground clearance situation is also not good. But this is a cruiser comparison and cruisers are not meant for all out performance. They're meant to look and sound cool and these bikes do that better than any other midsize competition, period. If you want that Harley character, there's no substitute. Perhaps the bikes that come closest to the legitness of the 883 and 48 are the Indian Scouts. And there's seven of them with the less expensive three running a 1000cc 78 horsepower motor and the other four rocking the full Monty, a 100 horsepower 1133cc mill. Like the Harleys, they're equipped with belt drive, but unlike the Hogs, they're quick right out of the box thanks to their liquid cooled modern engines. They range in price from 9,500 US to 12,500, which makes the less expensive ones a pretty good deal for genuine American built cruisers. The Indians run the style range from the classic Scout to the more custom Bobber and Rogue with their stripped down looks. They don't have much in the way of electronics or high tech, but they look great and are plenty quick. Cornering is decent, and given the fact that they're V twins, so is the sound, though nothing quite sounds like an Evo Harley. But then the Scouts will leave the Evo Harleys for dead in a straight line or on a curvy road and are generally pretty reasonably priced. Another pair of pretty legit contenders in this field are the Triumph Bonneville Bobber and Speedmaster. With its tractor seat and chain drive, you could almost mistake the Bobber for something out of the 60s if not for that radiator. The Speedmaster has a passenger seat. Despite their classic looks, these are techie bikes as they sport rider modes and traction control. They have 76 horsepower and 78 pound-feet of torque and weigh in the 550 pound range which makes them plenty quick. The engine is the 1200cc parallel twin from the Bonneville range which has a 270 degree crank and has that 90 degree V-twin burble. These are definitely classic looking cruisers with plenty of heritage, however all of these features drive up their price to 13,500 US dollars making these Triumphs the most expensive bikes on the list so far. If you live in the UK or Europe, prices between these and the Harleys probably flip. But in North America, we pay a premium for Triumphs. Speaking of premium, back we go to Harley because they are busy building a new Sportster line and these new sporties ain't cheap. The Iron 883 and 48 are on their way out and Harley has stopped referring to them as Sportsters. But there are two new Sportsters in the lineup now, powered by Harley's new Revolution Max motor. The less expensive is the Nightster, which is powered by a 975cc motor pumping out 90 horsepower and 72 pound-feet of torque. It has rider modes, traction control, belt drive, a boatload of accessories, is highly customizable, decently quick and looks pretty good. However, it has one major weakness, it costs 13.5 thousand US dollars. And Honda sells the functionally identical Rebel 1100 for over 4 thousand less. That's a giant difference. Yes, the Harley looks better and has Harley Davidson stamped on the tank, but the days of a huge percentage of North American riders being solely committed to the motor company are going away. And as nice as it is, this bike does not sound or feel like a traditional sportster. So yes, it's a Harley, but the Rebel does all the same things for way less money and while that may not have mattered in the 90s, it's an open question as to whether it does now. The Nightster is at least 1500 bucks overpriced. Speaking of expensive hogs, the Sportster S will run you 15 G's US, but you do get more for your money here. This is a true power cruiser with its 121 horsepower 1250 cc engine. The upside down forks, mono shock, color TFT, more serious brakes and higher cornering clearance means that this bike will outrun most cruisers in almost any situation. Yes, the looks are polarizing, but I have to admit they've grown on me, and the specs are impressive. 15,000 is steep especially for a bike called a Sportster, but this thing ain't like any other Sportster ever built. It's a true performance bike and therefore should be seriously considered by folks looking for a cruiser to rip around on. Few cruisers can match the Sportster S, but one that can not only match it but beat it in every regard is the Ducati Diavel. These bikes come in several trims, all of them absolutely capable of crushing every other middleweight cruiser mentioned here. 
The Diavos 1260cc engine is the same one that used to power Ducati superbikes and pumps out over 150 horsepower and 95 pound-feet of torque. That power is combined with all the world-class electronics, a sublime chassis, brilliant suspension and powerful brakes to produce a cruiser you can take to a track day. The looks of the Diavos are definitely not traditional and highly polarizing. I think they look like potatoes with wheels but other people love them. Needless to say, if you're walking into a Ducati dealership, you don't need to know the price. If you gotta ask, you can't afford it. But the MSRP on these bad boys starts at 21,300 US and ends north of 30. Hey, this is the cruiser that can keep up with sport bikes in the twisties and can leave many of them for dead in a straight line. You wanna play, you'll have to pay. So these are not for everyone. However, if you're looking for a mid-sized cruiser, there truly is a bike for everyone. Whether you're into cruising the boulevard, touring, or sporty riding, there are bikes available to do all of those things in several budgets. So which one are you leaning toward? I actually have one that was discontinued last year, the 1200cc Sportster Roadster with an air-cooled Evo engine. And I got it new for a sweet deal. It's not the fastest or most comfortable middleweight cruiser, but it's one of the most stylish. Which one of these bikes is your favorite and why? Please share your thoughts in the comments and ride safe. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.